Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Bigginhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Cabrini College's Freak Week started on Monday, October 22nd and will continue until Halloween. Let's check in with Catboard and see what events will be coming up next. Freak Week is something that Catboard does every year around Halloween, the week of or the week before. This year it's actually Freak Week and a half because we have a week and a half to do our events and we try to center all of our events around Halloween and to be Halloween or spooky themed. Um, some of the events that we do, uh, we had the horror photo shoot yesterday, or two days ago, yesterday we had the spooky scavenger hunt, and then tonight we have ghost hunters. This weekend we have the haunted mansion and the booby dance and a trip to Eastern State Penitentiary. I would say our most popular events are probably the booby dance and the haunted trips that we go on. We went to the Bates Motel last year and it was a ton of fun. Um, a lot of people signed up for it and everybody seemed to really have a good time. My favorite event would probably be the, the trips that we do. I went on to the Bates Motel last year and it was so much fun and I'm really looking forward to going to Eastern State this Sunday. Um, one of the other events we do is the Capture the Clue Mystery Dinner. That's next Tuesday. It's five dollars for students to sign up. You get to eat dinner in the mansion and each student will get an individual uh, identification and they get to solve a mystery interacting with the other participants that are there to eat the dinner as well. Um, and the newer events that we have this year were the photo shoot, that was the first time we did that. We Catboard teamed up with the photography club. We had the photo shoot a couple days ago and then Eastern State is another newer uh, event that we have because last year we went to the Bates Motel so we switched it up this year going to Eastern State Penitentiary. Relax and Succeed, a Cavaliers in Transition event was held last week, jointly organized by both Cabrini's Alumni Association and the Co-op and Career Services Office. Relax and Succeed was the first workshop in a series of four designed to build confidence and get in a positive frame of mind. Let's take a closer look. Phrasing everything toward your positive outcome. What initially got me into stress management was my own stress level my own stress level, seeing the effects that stress was having both on myself, um, on the people around me, my loved ones. And when I heard that there was a way that we could decrease our stress, I just thought that was the greatest idea and started learning more about it. And, uh, and I went into the stress management field for many, many years. Relax and Succeed is a four-week professional development program aimed at identifying your barriers to success and taking your career to the next level. Well, I actually helped to plan the seminar with Jackie and I spoke to Jackie um, just about her whole technique of stress management. And it really sounded like a self-actualization process. I know a lot of our alums are in transition looking for new positions so we thought it was a, I thought it was a really great fit. I think you have to relax to succeed so I think it fits really well together. Rachel and I had been talking about this for quite some time and she was aware of our speaker and thought this would be a good topic, so we basically co-host this and so I was glad to be able to be here, although I have to give Rachel all the credit, she really organized <laughs> the whole program. It was very interesting and it was very helpful, it was different than I thought it would be. Um, how, how your mind and your body work together and how by putting yourself in a, a positive frame of mind can be very powerful. Well, what I'm hoping to do is to help people understand uh, their, where their stress comes from and how they can, how they can on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, understand deeply what they're feeling and that they're creating their experience of the world from the inside out. When people have that understanding that they're creating their experience from the inside out, life takes on a completely different quality. They approach their goals in a different way. My hope is for everybody in this class to be able to achieve their goals. For Location, I'm Jenna Rose DiGiacomo. Ready for some witchcraft and wizardry? This Friday, October 26th in Chestnut Hill marks the third annual Harry Potter weekend. Enjoy a ghost tour, magic show, and a viewing of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Don't forget to walk around the neighborhood where the shops will be transformed into Diagon Alley and be prepared for a Quidditch tournament taking place later that weekend. For more information, visit the website campusvilly.org. 
Here's a twist on picture taking. A Philadelphia photographer went around to 13 different high school proms to take pictures with a special Polaroid land camera. There are only five of these cameras in existence. This Sunday in Philadelphia is your last chance to get a unique picture taken. Admission is $14 with the student ID. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. On Friday, October 26, on Lancaster Avenue, a play, a pint, and a pie are coming to the Milk Boy Coffee Shop for one night only. Some of Philly's well-known actors will be playing in this production. Come down and enjoy the play, a slice of pizza, and a pint. All is included in the ticket price, which is $15. For more information, go to tinydynamite.org. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini Sports, we are now entering the final week of regular season play with CSAC playoffs scheduled to begin this weekend. In two games last week, the men's soccer team scored a total of 16 goals with a 10-0 stampede over Valley Forge Christian College and a 6-0 triumph over Baptist Bible College on Saturday. Six different Cavaliers scored in Saturday's contest. Women's soccer blank centenary college won nothing on Tuesday with freshman Kerry, don't call me Kara, Hinkleman recording the Cavs' goal. The volleyball team swept Rosemont on Monday. Danny Carosa and Jen Grenauer each recorded seven kills to lead the Cavs. Field hockey beat Keystone 5-1 in their last game, with Kerry Ann Farrell and Lindsay Atzer each recording two goals. The golf team placed eighth out of 13 teams at Monday's Immaculata University Invitational. Cross Country participated in the Immaculata Invitational as well, with the women's team placing fifth and the men's team placing third. Jeff Young and Stephanie Martin each led the Cavs. In Philly sports, the Sixers concluded their preseason with a 6-1 record following Monday's 98-90 victory over the New York Knicks. The regular season is expected to, get, to begin on Halloween night against the Denver Nuggets, a game that will feature Andre Iguodala's return to the Wells Fargo Center since being traded over the summer. The Eagles will look to get back on the winning track this Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta comes into this game with an undefeated record of 6-0. Will the Birds put the first dent in the Falcons' season? Tweet us your thoughts at Location PR. In NHL news, the NHL Players Association rejected an offer the league made last Tuesday, and games have been canceled through November 1st as a result. This week's Location Athlete of the Week goes to Danny Carosa for leading the Cavs in kills over the past several games. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next because I provide an update on Philly sports as well as CSAC tournament action. You will not want to miss that. Now back to Val with your trip around the nation. Laws prohibiting homeless people from begging have been found to contradict the First Amendment's right for free speech. The homeless in Berkeley, California are at risk of a $75 fine for sitting and lying on commercial sidewalks between the hours of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. According to the executive director of the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty, these laws are the beginning of a national trend to criminalize the homeless. Laws have been placed to eliminate the homeless from many areas of the city, such as park benches, public restrooms, and sleeping in cars. In Washington, the Transportation Security Administration fired 25 of its agents and suspended 19 for not following screening procedures at the Newark Liberty International Airport. The employees were caught on surveillance cameras in November and December of last year not following the proper baggage check orders. The employees are supposed to scan every bag and sometimes open bags by hand. According to CNN, this has been a growing problem in several states and it now marks the largest removal of TSA employees in the agency's history. Earlier this week, in Brookfield, Wisconsin, a gunman opened fire at a day spa killing three people. The gunman was already dead when the police arrived on the scene. According to the New York Times, police did not release any information regarding the motive of the gunman. People were running and screaming out of the spa, according to witnesses. Four people were injured and taken to a nearby hospital. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. After the final presidential debate, celebs have clearly chosen sides, or at least clearly decided to remain neutral. Celebrities took to Twitter to share their impulse reactions to both President Barack Obama and Republican nominee Mitt Romney's respective comments on foreign policy and their plans for role of commander-in-chief. Who other than Lindsay Lohan, who has plenty to say about President Obama's tax plans? And even though she's a high-paid Hollywood actress, she wants a tax break. Lohan was on Twitter Monday night during the final debate. During Obama's speech, she mentioned that during his time as president, he's cut taxes for those who need it, such as middle-class families and small businesses. To that quote, 26-year-old Lohan replied via Twitter, We also need to cut them for those that are listed on Forbes as millionaires. If they are not, you must consider that as well. 
It's a bit unclear what Lohan is trying to suggest. I'll leave the comments up to you and look forward to your responses on Twitter at LocationPR. So the top secret wedding finally went down, but more importantly, we want to see pictures of Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel tying the knot. These two Hollywood hotshots know their pictures are in high demand. Justin and Jessica sold their pictures to People magazine. So how much did they get? Reportedly, the couple sold their photos for a whopping $300,000. Some say this is a lot, but some say it could have been more. Justin and Jessica's wedding cost estimated at $6.5 million. An average American wedding costs $27,000. A breakdown of some of their expenses is a private plane ride at $100,000, her engagement ring costs at $130,000. If they rented out the entire Italian resort, it was at least another $1 million. So do you think $300,000 is a fair price for the pictures? Tweet us at LocationPR to let us know what you think. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. The Taliban claims responsibility for the attack on Malala Yousafzai in Pakistan this past week. The teenage girl who was shot in the head can stand with the aid of nurses and is communicating better to the, according to the director of the UK hospital where the young girl is staying. A tracheotomy tube is currently keeping her airway stable. In Pakistan, thousands have joined together in support of the teenage girl and even the government has been responding. The shooting is still under investigation, but Pakistani authorities have made several arrests. The Israeli Navy has stopped a ship bound for Gaza, the Estelle. The Israeli military warned the ship to change its course, but those on the ship ignored the Navy's calls and commands. The Navy boarded the ship and took the passengers into custody. The passengers on board were hoping to grab attention for human rights in the Palestinian territories, which has been under an Israeli blockade for the past several years. Since the ship was in international waters, the ship's seizure should end soon, according to a spokeswoman aboard the ship. In Saudi Arabia, the people speak out on Twitter against the country's royal family. Twitter has become a huge social media tool for the Saudi Arabia in crossing racial boundaries. Some Saudis wonder how the royal family can keep this conservative society under control without serious reform. According to the New York Times, the Saudis spread their thoughts across Twitter hoping for government change. According to a preacher who was jailed for verbal attacks on the government, he believes the wealth gap between the ruling class and the rest of Saudi Arabia is detrimental to their society. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Bagenhow. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.